to you, my dear students. Once again, I'm, Sh I'm Sean Sevier Alperita. So I'm going to tackle about our final topic. One of the final topics for STS is the aspects of gene therapy. So before we proceed, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube page. Okay, so the lesson objectives at the end of this lesson, the students should be able to describe the gene therapy and its various forms and assess the issues, uh, potential benefits and detriments to global health. Okay, so let's proceed now to the basic process. So there are several approaches to gene therapy. These are the following. Okay, so the first one is the replacement of mutated gene that causes disease with the healthy copy of the gene. Another one here is the inactivation of a mutated gene that is functioning improperly. Moreover, introducing a new gene into the body to help fight a disease. So, a gene cannot be directly inserted into the human gene or cell so it is inserted into another gene using a carrier or vector it's professor dave let's get therapeutic he knows a lot about the science stuff professor dave explains when we introduced some concepts in biotechnology, we briefly mentioned the notion of gene therapy and alluded to its enormous potential for treating genetic disorders. This is a fascinating and promising area of study, so in order to better understand it, let's take a closer look now. There are a number of disorders that can be traced to a single defective gene. Some mutation has arisen, which alters the product of gene expression, and the resulting protein does not perform its function as intended, which creates problems for that cell and by extension the organism. But what if we could fix this gene? What if a normal allele could take the place of this defective one? That would necessarily solve the problem for that cell, and if this could somehow be done for every cell that possesses the mutation, it would solve the problem for the organism, definitively curing the disease. That is precisely what gene therapy seeks to do. Take, for example, a type of severe combined immunodeficiency that causes bone marrow cells to be unable to produce a vital enzyme, an issue which stems from a single gene. Because bone marrow cells include stem cells that give rise to all the cells in the blood and immune system, this can be a huge problem. A solution to this is as follows. We can synthesize an RNA version of the normal allele for the gene of interest and insert it into a retrovirus. Recall from our study of viruses that a retrovirus has the ability to generate a DNA transcript of its RNA genome which it then inserts into a host cell for replication. We then allow this retrovirus containing our cloned gene to infect bone marrow cells that have been removed from the patient. The virus is taken into these cells and viral DNA containing the normal version of the gene of interest is inserted into the genome. These recombinant cells are then injected back into the bone marrow of the patient, and as these continually divide over an extended period of time, as bone marrow cells do, more and more cells have the capacity to produce the vital enzyme, and the disorder is alleviated. So as we just discussed, gene therapy can involve inserting a normal allele into a genome to compensate for the activity of a mutated gene. It can also involve introducing a completely novel gene into an organism. It can even involve inactivating or knocking out a mutated gene so that it will not be expressed. 
In addition, the novel DNA is not always delivered by a virus. There are techniques that involve the introduction of foreign genes into cells by electroporation. This is where an electrical field is used to increase the permeability of the cell membrane so that the DNA can pass through tiny temporary holes. DNA can even be injected into cells with incredibly thin needles. There have been some complications with gene therapy, largely due to the uncertainty associated with where the insertion of the retroviral vector will occur on the genome. It is also difficult to control the manner in which this new gene is expressed. However, there is still cause for cautious optimism, as a number of very serious genetic diseases have been treated with significant success, and this is an area of ongoing study. There are those that cite ethical concerns with this kind of practice, in addition to the obvious technical challenges. Is it appropriate to modify the genome of a living human? Well, it is worth noting that this has already been done through blood donation and organ transplantation. These both introduce living cells with foreign DNA into someone's body. Is gene therapy really that different? Of course, one could argue that it is a slippery slope. Will this technology be used to genetically engineer humans? And if so, according to what guidelines? This type of thought could lead to the practice of eugenics, whereby efforts are made to control the genomes of a population. This has been disastrous in the past, and under the wrong political influence could be disastrous in the future. But just as with the dangers brought on by cars, airplanes, and the internet, we must balance a zeal for progress with extreme caution. Most importantly, while certain concepts seem like science fiction, we must consider them seriously while they still feel that way, so that we have a firm idea of what to do when they eventually become a reality. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel Okay, so let's move now to the next topic. Um, what are the two types of gene therapy? So the first type is the somatic gene therapy involves the manipulation of genes in cells that will be helpful to the patient but not inherited to the next generation. So um, the main purpose here is just only to manipulate the genes. Um, the other one here is the germline gene therapy. Okay, so it involves genetic modification of germ cells or the origin cells that will pass the change on to the next generation. So the best example here is you're going uh, the um, the virus that contains a a modified genetic material. So once a virus enters into our cell and produces another viruses so um, the viruses that contain a healthy dna will the healthy dna will also be the ones to attach to our own dna so that is the germline gene therapy okay so stem cell gene therapy so what is a stem cell or stem cells stem cells are mother cells that have the potential to become any type of cell in the body so here they have the ability to self-renew or multiply while maintaining the potential to develop into other types of cells So it can become cells of the blood, heart, bones, teeth, skin, muscles, brain, and among others are derived from different sources, two of which are the embryonic stem cells derived from a four or five day old human embryo that is one of the blastocyte phase of development. okay so that is why are derived from the sources embryonic stem cells okay 
The next one is the st- somatic stem cells that exist throughout the day after the embryonic development and are found inside the different types of tissue. Okay, so let's proceed now to the bioethics of gene therapy. So there are ethical issues involved in gene therapy. Some of the inquiries cited are from the generics home reference dated 2017. Okay, the first one. How can good and bad uses of gene therapy be distinguished? Okay, next one. Who decides which traits are normal and which constitute a disability or disorder? The third one. Will the high costs of gene therapy make it available only to the wealthy? Okay. Could the widespread use of gene therapy make society less accepting of people who are different? Okay. Should people be allowed to use gene therapy to enhance basic human traits? such as height, intelligence, or athletic ability. It's been very useful for science and for giving hope to, um, to HIV positive people. Um, Okay, so the video that you have seen, the previous slide, was uh, Berlin, uh, a patient, a first patient from Berlin, who received a um, a stem cell, uh, stem cells, no, stem cell research or stem cells, their stem cell therapy used to cure uh, HIV, uh, HIV, so. Here in the development of the gene therapy, um, this guy in the previous slide was the first patient who cured from HIV using gene therapy. Okay, so the lesson summary. So, what's the summary here? The first one is that the gene therapy is a method that may treat or cure a genetic related human illness so there are two forms of gene therapy first is somatic gene therapy and the other one is the uh, germline gene therapy okay there are many ethical issues on gene therapy some of these issues are about questions on those authority or power to decide which human traits should be altered. Okay, discussion points. Number one, would you subject yourself to gene therapy without its 100% assurance of effectiveness or future negative side effects? Next one is, should gene therapy be limited to medical concerns only, or could it be used for aesthetic purposes? So, um, that's all my dear students. Thank you for watching. Um, Please don't forget to like share and subscribe to my youtube page for more videos once again i'm shan Vier alquilita now signing off